Please now I call upon the member of government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Interestingly, interestingly, we all exist by the result of the lottery of birth. It means that you do not choose on where, in what context, in which nation do you born, but it is actually randomly given, and that is the fate you have. That is why we think immigration in this context of this today's modern society, it is necessary, and sometimes it is good, we have to promote necessary immigration. That is the basic stance coming from the whole government bench, and the stance of the opposition is actually harming that necessary and good immigration, which we, we were, you are not able to choose at the first beginning of your birth. That is why we believe there is an important need for having rejecting these kind of um, people who oppose the prevailing social values in the receiving states. We have two extensions in closing government. The first is especially is coming from the questions of opening opposition. So they, they keep asking that diversity is something good and they have the right to dissent and sometimes that is necessary. We tell you that, you know, that even if, they, first of all, they've never, they've never proved why diversity is essential and necessary at the first place, but we want to further extend that point and answer to that question why even there sometimes could be advantages from those dissent having a descent from the member of the original national identity, but from a different person of an immigrant is so different. That would be the first extension of our closing government. Second of all, we want to also extend the idea how it discourages necessary immigration in the current status quo. We think the opening government already talked about the harms of the current status quo of immigration. We want to further extend that it creates extreme nationalism and creates harms to both future gener generations and also the receiving states. But moving on, let's talk about the things what the opening opposition further brought about. So once again, the, the leader of opposition talked about, you know, let the immigrants just freely adapt to society, then they will choose. If they want to adapt to society, they will remain. And if they do not want to, they will just leave. Let, let, let it up to their personal choice. We think, yes, perhaps it can satisfy his own fate and his own preferences, but we clearly tell you that harms other immigrants existing in the society and other immigrants who want to immigrate to that country in the future because that leaves a bad precedent and prejudice against the society, that person and that whole nation and that is why we think we can not only leave it to their own personal choices. But they also, once again, they try to keep talking about the idea of diversity. Yeah, maybe diversity because we are all educated enough, you know, diversity could be sound like something good value. But you have to prove to us in a debate to win why diversity is a good and necessary value and what kind of diversity you're talking about. Why opposing to the prevailing social value, which is actually the upholding pillar of that existing society, which the member has all agreed upon to maintain that society, why opposition to that is very essential and necessary. No response coming from the opening opposition. Moving on, the DLO tried to rebut the case of the opening government and tell us that they never proved us the harm, but still there is a benefit coming from the opening opposition when we have received we, when we receive these immigrants because they promote you know and you know help the developing of economy. We tell you that number one, usually immigrants go to a better country, a better economic situation in those situations, right? So when these immigrants go into that country, the majority of the immigrants start from low paid jobs and how does that really you know, blow the economy itself and even make their you know, life even better? We think that the benefit from coming from that is, is a really ditzy one coming from opening the chain. But second I want to tell you that even if you know, the economy could be benefited in, to some extent, we think that the harm from you know, actually opposing the social value, which is upholding the current status quo of that society, would be even harmed and that leads to my first extension. Yes? Prevailing social value means there's no di di like dissenting views about that social value. That is why we want outside people to actually come in and give offer, offer diversity. Understood. That could be Understood. 
factually wrong. Even if there is a prevailing society, it doesn't mean there is a 100% consensus. We think that there's still a minority of opinions. I'm going to compare that in my first extension. So what kind of you know, prevailing social values we're talking about? We think that although it is not universal, they are needed in any and all countries, even in the liberal democracies, to the, for the means through, because it is the means also the government enacts policies and makes social structures. For, so for example, think of the case of South Korea. We are in a situation with, you know, having kind of an armistice with North Korea. So the prevailing social value is that still everyone should go to the military service and you know, the main enemy of South Korea is North Korea. That is a prevailing social value. But still there are minorities and different views that you know, the liberal or the most, most progressive parties or those people still think that that is not the way to go and we have to make peace in this society. We think that there's still in those um, prevailing society the minority opinions. So we concede to the fact that in sometimes those minority opinions exist and sometimes it could lead to a better society uh, in the current status quo. But the main difference between immigrants and the people who oppose to raise that idea in the current status quo is that whether or not you share the common identity yeah, yeah. from the beginning, we say that that is national identity, which is the basic framework. Although we say there is an area of globalization, still the frame of nationality is strong. Even in Niao 2012, we think that you like, wow, out of 16, 13 Korean debate teams have come up, you know, like with adjudicated nationality is different, maybe is there a bias or not. Those kind of notions still exist because we have national identities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to this logical debate thing, even in logical debate, when it comes to social values, we think that that difference is making, becoming bigger and bigger. That is why there's more harms. So like, there will be no like fair discourse. We think that even if they had tried to raise those kind of you know, dissent or you know, pre precious ideas, we think that because they do not share the common national identity from the beginning, that, that could not actually bring harm to more causes prejudices. We think that that is not beneficial and not necessary in the first place. But moving on, why you know, it discourages necessary immigration? We think that because it makes bad precedences. So because, in, especially in, in, in the case of immigrants, even one immigrant of a different nationality comes into your society because, because of your appearance, because you know, the majority and the minority asymmetry, we think that it repents not only the individual but also the whole nation, the whole nation you have come from and the other people come from the same nation. Then what, harm, what is the harm when they actually oppose the prevailing social value that exists? It creates a bad precedent that the prejudice that these people are actually, the, because they, say they share the same common national identity, all the people are actually having this kind of you know opposing idea to our social values that we have agreed upon. We think that that is very harmful for the future generations who want to you know future immigrants who wish to go into that country because they are afraid. Maybe if I go in, I'll be automatically discriminated because they might think I'm going to oppose that social value. We think that is actually harming the necessary immigration needed in CSCO, but also in the receiving state because it creates that prejudices. They think maybe strengthening our national identity is more important. We think that is leading to extreme nationalism, which is very harmful to making society harmonious, but rather making it more divided, more having discrimination in the society. That is why the closing government thinks that this motion is necessary. We are very proud to propose. I thank the Prime Minister for his speech. Now I call upon. Oh, sorry. Never mind. For a government. Now I call upon Member Bobbish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, we believe that this debate, coming back to the real core essence from closing opposition, this debate is about drawing lines. And we believe that none of the government side was able to draw a substantial harm or a substantial reason upon drawing the line of why these individual people are going to cause so much harm to the extent that we're going to criminalize these yeah, yeah. individuals and kick them out of society or prevent them from coming in. So that's going to be a unique, very unique contribution coming from closing opposition about, first of all, what is the criteria of immigration and when do we kick somebody out? 
And second of all, why it actually increases the amount of discrimination and marginalizes the minority within those existing societies. Before I go to that, four responses to the entire government pitch. First response is to their idea of competition and why economic value is actually of utmost importance. Two responses. First of all, just because you understand the culture doesn't decrease the amount of skills that these individuals have. So the amount of competition is still going to exist under that society, but if your reason to actually discriminate or hate somebody is because they're taking my job, then obviously that competition still exists, they're out of order. Second response. We do actually believe that their model is decreasing and is decreasing the best amount of experience that the individual can have when you can actually get persuaded by the individual society. Just because you object to a particular value, that does not mean that you cannot be persuaded upon that value. The moment where you actually come up on that side and reject these people from coming into my country to begin with, that decreases the best experience for me to actually understand that value and be persuaded by that value. We believe that that it decreases the amount of incentive. Second point rebuttal is regarding their minority. Changun's argument is like Germany argument. First of all, I have three responses. First of all, cultural problems are still going to exist because just because you actually pass a test and learn about that culture doesn't decrease the amount of values that you actually have because yeah, obviously yeah, 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 yeah. something that you believe and something that you learn is obviously very different. Very Second of all, even under yeah, yeah. your model, model citizens that understood that culture are still getting discriminated. So we don't necessarily see upon how your model actually increases the amount of model citizens to begin with. But third of all, we actually believe that there's going to be more tension under your model because even if you understand the culture and even if you actually pass the test, if you're still actually going to discriminate these individuals, more minority marginalization actually occurs under your model. We don't necessarily see yeah. why that policy actually exists. We believe that the Germany policy is a false one, Mr. Speaker. It's a bad policy. We reject yeah. that. Let's go to the closing government because they came up with very weird extensions, right? First of all, regarding common identity. They were never able to differentiate why common identity was such a crucial thing that it actually goes upon that extent. At the end of the day, we don't necessarily think that immigration or nation like nationality, uh, like immigration or citizenship is based upon the nationality because even if I don't want to go to the army no matter what even if it is benefiting my South Korean government obviously I don't want to I don't necessarily want to do that right yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day we don't necessarily see upon high commonality actually exists but even if that actually does exist we don't see any substantial harm because what he said was that oh there's gonna be a lot of prejudices just because you don't have common identity there was absolutely no reasoning and no substantiation whatsoever we believe that idea false but second of all he also talked about a uh, fourth point of revolt about prejudices he said that the future is actually gonna not come because oh they are afraid that they are going to get discriminated. That's going to be even more harmful under your model because obviously you're already setting the criteria and saying that if you go against my model, if you go against these rules, then obviously you should not come into my country. So first of all, there are going to be no citizens to actually come in to begin with. But second of all, even if they do come under your model, there's going to be more discrimination which is going to be upon my extension. So let's go to my first extension upon what is the criteria of immigration and when do we actually kick somebody out. Mr. Speaker, as openly government characterized, we are living in a global Globalized society that is decreasing the amount of barriers that exist within today's world. But we don't necessarily think that the criteria for kicking somebody out is based upon different values. Exactly what the closing government said was that even in a country, we have different values, we have conflicting yeah, yeah, values. Yeah. And that's the exact reason why we believe that that is the reason why we should actually accept these values. Why is that? Yeah. Because obviously the criteria is still existent in the status quo and it is not based upon different values. Because we don't kick somebody out of my country just because I have a different value. Yeah, right? yeah, obviously yeah. we actually believe that the yeah, yeah. criteria criteria for kicking somebody out is not based upon different values, but it is based upon the criminality of that individual. It is their burden of government side to prove why these individuals, just because you have different cultural traits, just because you have different cultural values, that you are going to commit crime. Yeah, and it was even yeah, conceded by yeah. the deputy prime minister that these people aren't going to be crazy enough to rape because they have an incentive to stay. So we don't necessarily think that the characterization of these immigrants are to commit crime, are to commit these illegal actions. Because the only case in which we actually kick somebody out is based upon illegal Illegal immigration, illegal immigrants who do not come in here legally. So obviously that's the criteria upon when we don't allow an individual. But if, if it was conceded by Changdeni that these people aren't going to commit crime to begin with, then we just absolutely see no reason upon so why we should actually kick somebody out. Yes, ma'am. Your opening conceded to the fact that people tend to prosper more if they share the social perception. Why does that have to come yeah. after yeah. trial and error yeah. process? We actually believe that because it actually in, uh, like increases the amount of discrimination, which is going to be my next extension. Thank you, Cutie, for helping my structure. So, like, obviously, let's go into the substantial harm that's going to occur under their model, because obviously, you see, we obviously see that there's going to be far amount of discrimination. We believe that the opening actually slightly mentioned it in, like, a one-liner upon why it's actually going to increase the amount of discrimination. I have three main reasons why it's going to cause more discrimination. Because, first of all, you're creating disparities between the amount of cultures that exist within society. Because, obviously, if you want to come to the United States of America and say that the United States of American culture and the United States of American traits are far more superior 
superior and if you don't understand these kinds of superior traits obviously it creates a disparity between the culture and obviously that's the reason why people are going to get actually more are actually going to feel more far worse just because you don't understand us culture but second of yeah. all we also believe that the existing science societies will also go against that culture, right? So, for example, in the United States of America, you don't necessarily, for example, in the United States of America, they don't accept, like, Muslim culture, for example, because Muslim culture is a far inferior culture compared to the culture that we have in the United States of America. Then, obviously, the existing societies living within that society, living within that culture, are also going to go against the existing cultures that exist within that society, right? So, obviously, that's a clear reason. But third of all, and most importantly, it decreases the incentive for politicians or other societies societies to actually understand that culture. Why is that? Because obviously under our under their model they say that social tension exists. So let's live in a world even if social tension exists, why is that going to be beneficial? Because obviously it actually increases the amount of attention and increases the incentive for these individual countries to care more about these individual mm -hmm. culture. Why is that? Because although we can see that these uh, like immigration uh, like immigrants don't necessarily have the right to vote, the increasing amount of social tension that's gonna be brought upon their model obviously brings more attention to their country. Obviously they that country is going to try to solve the problem. But the moment where your society doesn't have that incentive to begin with, obviously politicians or other individuals won't care about how we can solve that problem and those minorities are going to stay minority no matter what. Yeah, because yeah. obviously the increased amount of population is not going to exist. And because those kinds of tensions are obviously going to be needed, that kind of incentive is going to be decreased yeah, under yeah. your model. And therefore, the moment that you discriminate the form of their own communities is the moment where the most increased amount of harms actually exist and therefore because under your model it increased the amount of discrimination and because you don't have a criteria for when we should keep them out you are supremely proud to all here, here. Yeah. Yeah. I thank the member of opposition for his speech and I call upon government Because we clearly witnessed the deadlock of the opening house. How these immigrants, like it was about whether immigrants actually cause harms or are they like like beneficial as the opposition actually say. What we tried to do from the closing government was that we tried to actually specify the scope of this debate by specifying the context of these immigrants who actually opposed to the like the prevailing values within the society. The biggest fallacy coming from the opposition side is that they actually stand on the premise that somehow these immigrants who actually oppose to the prevailing values are actually somehow benevolent, they have benevolent intentions to actually you know, like benefit the society that they're trying to immigrate. When they already said, when the op opening opposition already said that usually when we see immigrants, they will actually go into another country because they like the values of that society, that they have an incentive to actually rather conform to the prevailing values. We explained to them if, if in general cases, if immigrants are willing to actually conform to the values, when we actually talk about those who actually oppose to the values, meaning that if they're willing to go against the like normal incent average incentive system that we see exist in the immigration, they have to explain to us why these immigrants like are not we clearly explain to you how these immigrants who actually oppose the prevailing values are really, really small minorities to begin with. So they Poor try vision. to like, exaggerate as if take all like if these as if these immigrants who oppose these prevailing values take up all like a great proportion of all the immigrants. We have clearly explained to you, Mr. Speaker and like, Mr. Speakers and Madam Chair, how they're good and necessary sometimes immigrants, and we how we we told you how like they will not be free from these social prevailing values, and how these social prevailing values are also needed in cases. So the moving on and explaining under the premise, like challenging the premise that 
you know, somehow these you know, immigrants who actually oppose to the prevailing values are benevolent people, and how like um, why challenging the notion of the opposition side that social like conceded prevailing social value is not needed. I'm going to respond to what the previous speaker have said. Sure. Basically, it's really simple to understand. They they said to us that we have the burden of having to prove why they cause so much harm. Yeah, yeah. We already explained to you, first of all, that we're not we're talking about really minor cases where like when, when immigrants, they usually have an incentive to conform, right? The example that they came up with, like Koreatown, Chinatown, those people we say are actually people who actually conceive and conform to the like, prevailing social values that we already have. Mm -hmm. Then the case they, they are actually trying to do and are people who actually try to say against, for instance, like when uh, like someone from, like for instance, like uh, in Philippines, comes to Korea to become a citizen, and they say that we don't like the idea of military duty. I just want to get the job in Korea and you know live as a citizen of Korea. We say that that is not a fair idea for all the citizens living in Korea, and even in the social minority within Korea, would say that they do not really understand, may not understand the full context, but the biggest problem that we told you was that the majority will actually going to create like their existing like prejudices will only strengthen, and this will lead to like much more like of detriments in the society, which you believe is clearly a harm. And before I move on, yes, the opening. The example you just mentioned before, people who have conformed was an example brought by PM as an example who did it, who would not conform. Here, here. here, here. You have to then explain to us why like people forming like Koreatown and Chinatown, like what how they are like what kind of action would define them as not conforming to their value. We say that Poor it's vision. okay if you have like a separate like identity, like like it's okay for an individual to have like plural identities. You may have an identity as a citizen of a certain nation. You may have, of course, identity with the like with the origin of like the original country that you came from. But what we say is that you know conforming to a value are two different things that they actually should have differentiated if they were to use that as an example to support their case. Or mission. Yes. Okay. So if you obviously have to have a citizenship if you want to go to the military mandatorily. But if that's not the case with immigration, how is that going to increase the amount of prejudices to Filipinos when they don't have an obligation to go to the military. Yeah. 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 Once again, we explain to you how when we talk about cases where immigrants actually oppose to the prevailing values, they must have a really, really good reason. Like There must be something really, really contradicting their interests that they have no choice but to actually make that voice heard to the like society they're trying to get immigrated into. Why? Because we already explained to you how usually these immigrants want to like go to those like other nations that uh, immigrate in the first place because of the you know lottery of birth that the member of the uh, government already explained to you, right? So what we say is that when if they have to like make their voices heard, that they would do so because first of all it would like, be against their own interest, but secondly they would do so in like some like means that will actually make their voice heard in the maximum like in the best way that they can. So we explain to you how these cases are actually like like they're actually really like making their voices heard and what we say is that when these voices are heard to the other members of the society it actually extends to all the harms not only to the majority like the minorities within societies or to the future immigrants that are to come so what did i actually witness in this debate today mr speaker i would basically witness how what kind of difference what kind of changes this will actually bring to the society and we already explained to you, like the opening has done their job in explaining how once those immigrants actually come into those society, they will have to conform to the prevailing social value anyways. So they have to actually prove why they must like oppose when they will be like under the influence of these prevailing values anyways. But all the member of the government extended the debate by explaining how this will actually harm like further immigrants who want to go and come into those countries. Why? Because we already explained to you that usually those prevailing values are the pillars of the society. And if you must like tackle the pillar itself, then we'd see the majority responding to like, what witnessing that these minorities who actually want to come, who should who they believe should actually conform to the pillars of the society, saying like uh, the wrong things, saying that their pillars are wrong. We believe that this will actually lead to like the majority actually uh, causing like actually oppressing the, like their own social minority and actually creating prejudices like, against like future immigrants to come. We have clearly explained to you that this is actually a harm for any and all cases. We do not concede like we all we all conceded that their social you know prevailing values may not be universal, but just because it's not universal doesn't mean that you know there is no need for prevailing values. I believe the member of the government has done the job explaining why social and prevailing values are needed in any and all countries, even in the liberal democracies. So, so it was very clear in this debate, like they stand on the premise that these you know immigrants will cause harms and harms and harms. 
we explained to you the only justification that you could bring us was that you know it will bring diversity. But we already explained to you and gave you the you know cost and benefit analysis how the benefit is actually very marginal, while the cost will be detrimental because we have explained to you the very stakeholders regarding this policy and the harms that each stakeholders will actually receive. It is very clear, Mr. Speaker, that you know like some like in, like immigration policies such as in Germany, as they openly said. Failed. There is a reason why it doesn't work. There is a reason why this, you know, discrimination is bad, and therefore we were very proud to propose. Speakers, go for seven minutes and twenty seconds. I thank the government. Wait. Now I call for. Speaker, I don't believe that there is a single thing that they have contributed in terms of national stability and the long-term stability of the nation. We don't actually think that it has to come from a single common denominator for all citizens in order for you to have the national stability. Here, here. I don't think there was any justification, and you know that. And it actually comes from a sense of tolerant attitude, like you openly mentioned. And it actually comes from a source of criteria that you need in order to screen off certain people that has the justification to be screened off, and I don't think upholding social values is one of them. I'm going to tell you why within my speech. And uh, what they're doing is actually hampering their attitudes to actually change, since you are not accepting the source of values that you retain from the country of your origin and the country that you actually arise from. And that, uh, the society that actually welcomes you for where your place of origin is, is actually the more possible solution in terms of the, uh, in terms of the change of social attitudes that they might have in the society. I'll bring to you three things today. Firstly, I'm going to talk about why Sir. there's no justification to implement this idea. And secondly, I'm going to talk about harms and why they will not actually conform to the society once this policy is implemented and it actually doesn't actually induce the social stability that you purportedly support. Firstly, with regards to why there is actually no justification. Well, they talk about the government's duty to actually create a social consensus upon which the society actually conforms. And it's, uh, they actually talked about the expansion of responsibility and the sense of conformity in this idea. Well, it's actually enough for us to say, like just like Taeyong has emphasized, to have Im immigrancy interviews and procedures that are necessary in determining their occupational qualifications, their income, and their like, uh, records of like, criminality here, in order here. for them to be accepted in the new community. And the, this notion re with regards to like how like the immigrants are to be you know um, are criminalized doesn't actually stand when you actually have to concede there is no correlative or causational aspect in terms of your social values and in terms of the malevolence that you hold to that society. Okay. These people are the ones that wanted to come to the country and wanted to contribute to it. Yeah. 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 Just because you believe that you know uh, some territory belongs to other states when your your state believes otherwise, like I don't think like that's that's like some sort of notion that like it is is going to make and rape or like murder, and I don't think that's necessarily necessarily true. And on the second level, they actually wanted to come, and retaining their social values will not actually harm the contributions that they give to the society. And uh, they actually talked about like how people shouldn't accept random people, with uh, like an example of you know Japan versus Korea, Korea in terms of like, territorial dispute. Well, like even Japanese professors write editorials supporting South Korean possession of Dokdo, and I've read like a lot of you know, articles based upon that. And so Dokdo is ours. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and oh, secondly, I'm going to move, uh, move uh, and secondly, the, uh, the Koreans actually supporting um, uh, these people is actually an enough justification for you to actually say that. And secondly, with regards to harms, well, this is an ex extremely important contribution that I'm going to bring to you today. Well, firstly, not everyone, like just like Taeyong said, upholds the same values, and there are dissenting values that are pre-existent in that society, here, even here. in the three that, 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 that purportedly have the different viewpoints. What is the problem that arises from them? Well, it actually hampers the ability of these individuals to actually increase in number in terms of the people that actually uphold your view viewpoint. Since, like, even in Muslim countries, like uh, the UAE, the women actually refuse to wear hijabs and burqas in some instances, which actually um, drive them to die. In this case, the zero-tolerance policy that you actually propose, like, in terms of uh, accepting immigrants, actually oppresses the any form of minority thoughts to be actually retained in the society for two reasons. Firstly, minority viewpoint might be the same with the immigrants that are coming to the 
of region that actually share the commonality with the minority viewpoint. And if you don't have that, there is no increase in number in terms of the minority, minority people, and you actually empower the majority to oppress the minority uh, in terms of their own affairs. And yeah, secondly, yeah. you create the sort of homogeneity in uh, among, among the minority, among the majority, to be actually strengthened in that idea, allowing this course to, 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 to be actually shut up. And I don't think that's necessarily the benefits that you bring to, to the society. Sorry. And Mr. Speaker, this is an important thing. Like, uh, this thing is the most important thing. If you actually, if you actually analyze their case, the only thing that they have is that they need conformity to social society, as the society in order for you to have stability. I'm going to tell you why that is not so, like according to Taeyong's analysis with regards to why they, they will have you know, no incentives or why they will have no attention in the first hand. Well, they say that like, um, uh, the incentives and commonality is to be emphasized for this state. To say, but like I'll provide two two points like uh, with with regards to this issue. Well, firstly, you actually make them learn, just like Taeyong said. You don't actually conform to social yeah, yeah, yeah. just because you have the preset like determination to actually learn the source of statistics, learn the source of the political viewpoint of another nation. Just because I go to Saudi Arabia doesn't mean that I think that women shouldn't be able to drive. Women rock, and like <laughs> values actually yeah, yeah. come. A value change actually Point come there. with like an encounter with a new environment. On your side. The environment unwelcomes your current value, the current value that you retain from the community of your origin, which actually makes it harder for them to actually change their dispositions, since you are actually unwelcoming these individuals in the first hand. So well, they will study books and magazines in order for you to have the source of knowledge at hand, in order for you to you know, retain the source of knowledge. But their value is not static, Mr. Speaker. What you are rejecting at the moment, when you actually reject these people based upon the social values and the criteria based upon social values, is what you're rejecting is the value that they retain in the current time frame, right now at this moment. These individuals to actually go in there and actually change the viewpoints with regards to like the social stability that you would like to, like sure. to you know That's um, have in, in this idea. No, I, I don't have time. I'm sorry. <laughs> and like the, the, uh, there, there's also like Muslim women in France and see women like dressed in you know flash, flashy you know out, uh, attire, and they may change their political viewpoints. They may change their cultural viewpoints about like what to wear like when when they're on the streets. And whatnot, and you actually hamper these people from doing so when you actually screen off these people. Since, like, um, and you actually strip off the chances for these people to actually change their disposition. And what you are left with is the information that you have inside of your heads. And thirdly, like, what, what criteria then is justified? Well, Taeyong has given you an ample analysis on how to actually judge these people in terms of the qualifications. Well, it is based upon the criminality and it is based upon the qualifications of a certain yeah. 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 like than to be screened off. And nationality oftentimes is not a criteria. I hate my country for sending me to the military. I don't know when I'm going to go. And, like, <laughs> and first, firstly, like, uh, and secondly, the criminality is consequential basis of what they actually did wrong. And they say. Uh, trial and error shouldn't be implemented, which actually uh, operates on the presumption and the premise that the different social values that they uphold comes always with the causational explanation of rape and murder and malevolence without the possible justifications of why that is so. Therefore, that doesn't stand either. And the citizens and immigrants are potentially different, Mr. Speaker. Citizens don't expect these immigrants to join the military. Citizens don't expect the source of you know, citizenship that they, sh uh, they should retain. And the prejudice, prejudice actually doesn't increase when the citizens do not expect such obligation from these immigrants. For these reasons, we're extremely proud to vote.